Now that you've seen what the revealing module pattern offers and the overall structure of the code, let's take a look at a few demonstrations of how it can be used in different scenarios. Let's get started by creating a new HTML page and I'm just going to call this revealing module demo dot HTML and we'll come in and add a script block. Now I'm going to have an output area as you've seen in some of the other demos. We'll write some output data to. And what I'd like to do is because I'm going to do the self invoking revealing module pattern demo I need to make sure that the DOM, at least this DOM element called output, is loaded before my script actually runs. You'll see what I mean. So what I could do is I could come in and put my script right up here inside of the onload, but if it was a separate script, that's not going to work out. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to put a script block right under this, and although I could load a separate script, we're just going to do it in line. We'll kind of pretend that it might actually call calculator.js or something like that. This is where I'm going to demonstrate the code that you've already seen up to this point for the revealing module pattern. So we'll go ahead and make a calculator. I'm going to pass in one parameter. And there is our wrapper. So if you come from a class background, again, this would be very analogous to a class in this particular case. Now I'm going to come in and make a variable. It's going to reference the DOM element above, so we'll pass in EQ, and then I'm going to make my object literal, and so this will represent my private members, and this will represent my public members. Okay, now instead of actually putting all the function code inside of the return block here, the object literal, we're going to go ahead and make it a little cleaner by following the revealing module pattern, which basically says, let's come in and let's make our functions up top. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put a comma there, move that over, and we'll have, let's do two of them. We'll do an add and a subtract. And then for the add, we'll just simply grab this and update the enter HTML to x plus y. And I do the same thing here normally, but I don't want them, uh, they'll run so fast you wouldn't see the difference between the two. So let's just do an alert, because I'm going to call both in succession. And we'll do x minus y so we can see it just works. Okay, now if I were to come in and run this as is, I would have to new up the instance because we're not self-invoking. So what I'm going to do is change that to be more of a singleton where we'll have one instance of the calculator in memory at any given time. And we'll do that by simply passing in the ID we want, which is this one, and we'll self-invoke the function. So when the script parses or gets parsed down to here, it'll then self-invoke the function pass this up in and then it'll be used in the script. Now if we were to come into here in the window load and now say calculator dot and call add we wouldn't be able to call it so I can go ahead and add this code but it's not going to do anything at this point because we haven't returned anything in the object literal so we'd get a script there if we try to run this. So what I'm going to do is simply say what do we want the alias of the internal function to be. So let's say it was do add, but I want it to call add, and we might have do subtract, which calls subtract. Now I'm providing an alias that the external caller of my script would use, but internally it's going to forward it to these guys. Now I normally don't do that, I normally name them as is. So we'll call them like that, especially since I already have it set up that way. Okay, so basically what will happen is once this guy gets parsed, our script then gets parsed, it self-invokes the function, that sets up all these internal members, we expose both of these functions publicly, and now we're ready to go, and we can just call this object directly without having to new it up, it's a singleton. So let's go ahead and view in browser, and we should get an alert, and then we'll get the 4. Now it looks like we didn't get an alert, so let's take a look at our script there has no method subtract which probably means I have a typo down here and I do subtract. 
So let's go ahead and change that. We'll run it one more time. And there we go. We get that and we get that. So we get our add and our subtract called. So you can see that it really does matter, obviously, what you name these. Um, again, if I was to call this do add and do subtract, then down here we would need to call them this way as well. Otherwise, the client would never see it. But now it kind of lets you name things like you want the public API to be called, and it allows you to name things whatever you want internally, which can be useful in some scenarios. So that's an example of getting started with the revealing module pattern. Now let's look at some more involved demos of using the pattern.